I once paid a mechanic $275 to change one of these. And today I'm going to show you how to do the same work for just $8. Let's do the math. The mechanic will charge you $550 to change both the tie rod ends in your car. I was able to find the parts for just $8. After changing tie rod ends, you'll need to have your alignment readjusted. Consider that cost. My tire shop will do that for about $60. My savings, a staggering $482. Tie rods are often overlooked in a car, but they can cause serious accidents. You can see the rubber covering of the joint is rotted away, letting the grease leak out. The ball joint's getting worn flat in several places. It was causing the car not to steer smoothly and to make noise. At worst, this joint can fail and allow your wheel to turn sideways while you're on the road, causing an accident. The tools you need for the job are quite simple. A pair of needle nose pliers, two open end wrenches, an adjustable wrench, your ratchet and socket, and a hammer. Things you might want to have handy, penetrating oil, and a blowtorch. And never forget, the most important tools of all, your hot cup of coffee, and your greasy ball cap. To get to your tie rods, jack up your vehicle and support it securely on jack stands. Make sure you block up the back wheel so the car doesn't roll while you do this. This is your tie rod in here, a retaining nut, and the tie rod that goes to your steering gear. Spray this down with penetrating oil, and you should be able to break the retaining nut loose with an open end wrench, like this. After you loosen the nut, return the nut until it butts up against the tie rod end. Don't tighten it back. This is to hold your alignment. This is the actual adjusting nut for your front end alignment. You can use a piece of tape like this to mark the location of the nut on the tie rod. This will help you keep alignment while you do the job. Next, remove the cotter pin that's keeping the castle nut on the top of the tie rod in. Took me a little bit of tapping, but I was able to remove it and break the castle nut free with your ratchet. It's called a castle nut because the top of the nut is cut like the top of a medieval castle to allow the cotter pin to pass through. This locks the castle nut in place. Then tap on the steering knuckle to help loosen up where the tie rod end connects. You can put the castle nut on upside down and then use the flat part of a hammer to tap the tie rod out should only take a few good wraps. Remove the castle nut and the tie rod should drop out like this. Remove the tie rod in, set up a tandem wrench system. I have one wrench jammed on the drive shaft so I can turn the other without turning the entire tie rod. I actually had a little trouble with this end. The other one went just fine. This passenger side end was stuck. I freed it up using a little propane torch. This expands the tie rod end piece and gives you just enough room to break through the rust that's caked up in there. After some heat and some penetrating oil, I was able to break it loose. I made sure the jam nut was in place so I didn't lose alignment. And then I was able to turn the tie rod in right off. This is the new tie rod, and it comes with a locking nut and a grease fitting. And you just thread it on like that. 
snug it up, not too tight. Simply spin the new piece into place. Then we can insert the tie rod into the steering knuckle. And we'll start the nut. We're going to get it started, but we won't torque it down just yet. Now it's time to tighten the jam nut back up against the tie rod end. Then torque down to 22 foot-pounds. And don't forget to take your car in for an alignment right after you finish changing your tie rod. I hope this video gives you the confidence to tackle your tie rod ends at home. I'm the Cash Budget Cajun. Happy motoring.